Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10. You can now pre-order Modern Horizons booster boxes for $199.99 when you use the promo code. And while you're there, check out their new exclusive Richard Kane Ferguson playmats. Details can be found in the description below. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and the Legends, and welcome to another edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. As always, we're going to check in on all aspects of the secondary market. It has been a little over a week since War of the Spark has been released, and those cards are having a big impact, not just on Standard either. There are impacts on other card prices in Modern, Legacy, Vintage, definitely Commander. We'll be looking at that through the course of the video. But without any further ado, let's get right into it. Beginning with the top five standard legal cards that have lost value this week. Just a quick reminder, we're not going to talk about War of the Spark cards in this video because we did a companion video on those on Thursday. I'll link it at the end of this one in case you missed it. Number five is Carnage Tyrant, down 62 cents to 12.25. Carnage Tyrant is still kicking around from what we saw in week one, but definitely not seeing a whole lot of play. When it does show up, it's kind of here or there as a one of, maybe two of. But more and more decks are running the newer cards, and this is kind of getting pushed out, it seems. So this will lose some more value going forward. Number four is Mox Amber, down 72 cents to 16.53. This card was spiking pretty aggressively during the preview season of War of the Sparks, and people thought maybe we will see that cheap Planeswalker that really wants to play with Mox Amber. Never really happened. Now we're through the first week of the standard season, and Mox Amber isn't doing a whole lot. Occasionally, there's some interesting modern decks running this. I did see a Mono White Legends deck recently, which looked pretty good. So maybe in the future, this card might find something to do, especially in the modern format. But for right now, it's going to lose more value. Number three, Arclight Phoenix goes down 75 cents to 1792. This card isn't going anywhere. It didn't necessarily blow the doors off standard the first week, but Is It Phoenix decks were around. Modern, though, is the real story here. You're going to find this in Is It Phoenix decks, Mono Red Phoenix decks. Even last weekend with the new cards coming into the modern format, those decks were still performing very well. I don't really see that changing anytime soon. The main reason this is lost value, again, is because there was the Arcane Tempo Standard Challenger deck, which included a copy of this. Those extra copies in the marketplace just softened the card up a little bit for a while. Number two, Kaya Orzov Usurper, down 76 cents to 16.99. This card got pretty hot towards the end of the last standard season because of the play it was seeing in Esper Control, as well as a number of modern decks started picking this thing up, and that really hasn't changed. You'll still find this in modern decks like Esper Control, Eldrazi and Taxes, and Lantern Control, among others, but typically it's like a one, maybe two of in those decks, so it's not seeing a lot of play when it comes to numbers, but it is enough play for people to pay attention for sure. When it comes to Standard, this card was definitely seeing less play this first weekend of Standard compared to what it was doing last season. We'll have to see if that changes, but I do think this card will soften up a little bit. Could go down a little more in the coming weeks if nothing changes. Number one, the Immortal Sun goes down 78 cents to 2710. This is very similar to Mox Amber. This got a lot of excitement around it as we saw that parade of Planeswalkers being previewed during the War of the Spark preview season. A lot of people thought they might want this at least out of their sideboards and standard. Well, here we are now. The testing has happened. People have brought decks to the first week, and the Immortal Sun didn't play a big role. Maybe it will see a little sideboard play. Maybe it sees more play as the season goes on, perhaps, if Planeswalkers do become dominant. However, I don't really see this holding a $27, $28 price point. This will continue to lose value. All right, let's move on to the top five standard legal cards that have gained value this week. I do have two honorable mentions, though. The first is Wayward Swordtooth, going up 87 cents to 6.79. This didn't do anything in the Star City Games events this past weekend or anything like that, but I have seen a Bolas of Citadel Brew using this card. Don't know if it's going to get anywhere in standard, but at least for this week, the card heats up. The second honorable mention is Scape Shift from Magic 2019, up 87 cents as well to 10.94. Now, this hasn't done anything in Standard, at least not yet, although this was a very undervalued card if you compare it to its Morning Tide counterpart, definitely, for folks that might want something like this to play in Modern. This is an excellent Modern card for Titan Shift decks and some of the other variants of that deck. Number 5, Chromatic Lantern, up 88 cents to 7.99. This is the one from Commander 2016. So a lot of people were speculating maybe we'll see Chromatic Black make a comeback. Maybe that would be the basis for a Super Friends deck, perhaps, in Standard. Didn't happen week one. We'll have to see if it happens later down the road. But even if it never happens, this is always a great Commander card. So this one ticks up a little this week. 
Number four, search for his cut up, 95 cents to 1611. If you watched those Star City Games events last weekend, you know there were a lot of different control decks performing pretty well. No surprise the search for his content has a pretty big week here, going up almost a dollar. This also continues to see modern play as well. Number three, speaking of control, here's Teferi Hero of Dominaria, up a dollar forty four to forty one ninety nine. Really going up for the same reason Search for Iskanta went up this weekend. Control decks look good, and this still sees modern play too. Number two, Watery Grave. Gate Crash is going up two forty five to fifteen eighty four. Guilds of Ravnica is going up two sixty two to sixteen dollars. So just generally, Shocklands have been hot. Why is this one in particular going up so much? Basically because we saw new decks that were running this that people are interested in playing. Grixis Control, of course, being the primary one. Esper Control was a very popular deck from last season that's still hanging out there too. We saw some Demir Control over the course of the last weekend do well. This card did have a pretty big spike though regardless, and I would expect some normalization to kick in over the next few weeks. Number one, Nico Bolas the Ravager goes up twelve oh six to thirty seven ninety seven. So that Grixis Control deck I've been talking about, it came in first as well as third place at the Star City Games Classic last weekend. So a lot of people are just trying to build that deck. Both of those decks did run four of these in the main, so no surprise that this has a big spike this week. Much like Watery Grave, I would expect a little normalization. The thing with this card so far, the Grixis Control deck looks great. Maybe we'll see a Grixis Midrange deck at some point do something good too. But this card isn't showing up in a lot of different places. But it is in a deck that performed very well, and there's a lot of players trying to put it together this week. Okay, let's move on to the world of modern with the top five modern legal cards that have lost value this week. A lot of these are cards that have been spiking recently, and they're just trying to find their price point, and they're normalizing a little bit. Number five is Tarmogoy from Modern Masters 2017, down 235 to 49.99. These Goyfs are still trying to find their price point. Nothing unusual here. The card, even though it lost a little value this week, is still doing fantastic and modern in decks like Golgari Midrange and Jund, two very popular and successful decks right now. Number four is Bloom Tender, down 280 to 4320. Huge commander card that has been spiking recently. Not too strange to see a little normalization this week. It is one of those Eventide cards, so I might as well get this out of the way early. Cards from that time period of Magic did have a lower print run compared to other modern era Magic sets. So they do tend to get a little spiky, and they do tend to normalize quickly as well sometimes. Number three, speaking of normalization, Jace the Mind Sculptor from World Weight goes down 327 to 135.99. This card got crazy recently. It was spiking big time. It's losing some of that spike value now, but it is still coming in higher than where it started a few weeks back for sure. This is a huge control card for Modern, Legacy, Great, and Commander as well. This is even seeing a little play in those Is It Phoenix decks and Modern out of the sideboard, so that's worth noting too. Number two, Azusa Lost But Seeking goes down 375 to 4499. This is the one from Champions of Kamigawa. This card got very hot because the Amulet Titan deck was doing well in Modern, so again, we see another snapback week here. Number one, Allosaurus Rider Cold Snap goes down 534 to 1140. Dual deck Selves versus Goblins goes down $6 to 951. The anthology version of this card also has gone down a little bit. Didn't quite make our list today, though. Now, last week, this card had a huge spike due to the buzz around that Neo brand deck in Modern. Can that deck get there? Well, time will tell. It hasn't put up a huge major result yet, but it's still early, of course. But regardless, whether that deck gets there or not, this card was definitely due for some normalization after the huge spike it saw. This is the type of card that people have in binders, they have in closets. Stores have them in their inventory. They don't bother to necessarily put them all on their online marketplaces. All of a sudden, this card shoots up and people say, wait a minute, I have copies of this that I don't play. Let me go ahead and trade them away. Let me sell them. Stores go ahead and take inventory, put them online because they know they can get rid of them quickly. Those extra copies enter the marketplace and you see the snapback. Okay, let's move on to our top five modern legal cards that have gained value this week. Number five is Summoner's Pact. This is the Modern Masters one, although all three copies of this card were going up this week, but this is the one that made our list. It goes up 518 to 1793. A couple decks were running this card already in Modern and doing very good. Amulet Titan and Titan Breach are two examples of that. However, this is a card that's also in that Neo brand deck. Number four, Jace the Mind Sculptor from Eternal Masters goes up $6 to 129.99. You can kind of see what's going on with these Jaces. They're meeting in the middle. The World Wake one went down. This one goes up. 
Number three is Balefire Liege. This is the one from Plane Chase going up 613 to 2999. This card got very hot because Commander players have been building around Feather. Now, the Eventide one spiked first, and that one is now starting to descend, so I would expect this one to probably go down a little bit within a week or so, too. Number two is Sliver of Legion, down 901 to 69.99. Sliver Lords have been extremely hot for Commander. This one has another big spike. Number one is Mycosynth Lattice. The Battle Bond copy goes up 1205 to 4612. Darksteel up 1235 to 4555. This card has been extremely hot. You know that if you've been watching the Market Watch. First off, people thought, I want to play Karn the Great Creator in this in my Commander deck. Totally makes sense. Crazy combo together, right? But there were people that were a little nervous about that because they thought perhaps because Karn does search for a card outside of the game that it could be banned in Commander. Well, the Commander Rules Committee made an official statement a couple weeks ago saying, yes, if you play by the Rules Committee rules to the letter, then a effect that will let you search outside of the game for a card will not work, but it doesn't mean Karn doesn't work. You just want to be able to search for a card outside the game. Now, they went on to say you can also, depending on what your playgroup wants to do, change that. If you want to play with sideboards or make a rule about where you can go get cards or something like that or a time limit, what have you, then playgroups can choose to change that rule as well. So with that clarification, people got more confident in this card. It started to go up again more. However, since all that started to unfold, people started to think outside of Commander when it comes to that combo. We are now seeing Vintage, Legacy, and Modern decks trying to run Karn and Mycosynth Lattice. This card has exploded. We'll have to see what happens long term with these decks. Can they put up the big results? Coming out of week one, we have seen Karn the Great Creator doing things in multiple formats. Time will tell exactly how good these decks are, but right now this card is red hot. Time for our Vintage Spotlight, where we talk about cards from Legacy, Vintage, 93, 94, or just cards that are important to collectors. Again, you're going to see a lot of Unlimited cards getting hot here. First, though, we have Sylvan Library from Legends. Goes up 522 to 126, 21. Now, this is an old Legends card. Harder and harder to find all the time in good condition. Maybe that's why it's going up, but it's a great Commander card. It's a Legacy staple. You'll find this in decks like Maverick and Lands and many, many others. Next is Badlands from Revise, going up 973 to 25970. Now, this is another one of those Revised Dual Lands getting extremely hot. We've been talking about this over the last few weeks. A couple others ticked up a little bit, but this is the one that had the biggest jump over the course of the last week. Of course, this is on the reserve list. Sedge Troll from Unlimited. This is also on the reserve list, but it was reprinted in Revised. It goes up 1251 to 11873. Grim Monolith. This goes up 1355 to 12677. This is also on the reserve list, and this is one of many cards this week that's getting a push because of Karn the Great Creator. This particular card sees play in Eldrazi decks and Legacy and Vintage, and Karn is pushing those decks. Shivan Dragon from Unlimited shows up yet again, up 5250 to 24750. This card just keeps going. Bad Moon from Unlimited. Another one that's been really hot recently goes up 5680 to 7999 this week. Chaos Orb, also from Unlimited, goes up $159.60 to $1,349.99. This is on the reserve list, and there's just some higher grade copies out there on the marketplace this week, which is pushing the price point. Same reason this is going up. Mox Ruby from Unlimited, of course, on the reserve list, goes up $397.50 to $2,897.50. All right, are you ready for another big commander spotlight? We're going to talk about cards that are important to Commander players here, although you're going to find a lot of cards this time that do have crossover appeal into other formats. Here's one of those. Kozilek Butcher of Truth goes up $1.05 to $33.01. This is the one from Modern Masters 2015. Now, of course, this is a great Commander card. Those Eldrazi colorless decks get better with Karn in them, but this is also a card that you might find in a Land Post Legacy deck, also being pushed because of Karn the Great Creator. Recruiter of the Guard, this card's been hot for a while now. It goes up $1.06 this week to $28.40. Great Commander cards. He's playing things like the Taste of Dex, but so many other builds too. Eldritch Evolution goes up $1.16 to five ninety nine. dollars Now, of course, this card is being pushed because of the Neo brand deck in Modern, but it is a good Commander card, so I wanted to point it out here too. Grand Abolisher from Commander 2014 goes up $1.18 to nine forty nine. Other copies of this card are going up too, but this one was moving the most. This is seeing some additional commander play now because decks are being built around God Eternal Oketra. 
Angus McKenzie, I like to point out when these gold reserveless legends cards are going up, this is actually a good pillow fort card for commander as well. It goes up $1.29 to one seventy four forty nine. Land tax, another card that's been hot for a while. Great in a lot of commander builds. Again, a lot of folks were looking at white because of Tasa, but it's not just about her. Battle Royale goes up $1.07 to twenty nine seventy four. Battle Bond goes up $1.32 to $30.60. Thief of Blood, this is from Commander 2015. It goes up $1.43 to $3.62. You can probably guess why. This will kill a lot of Planeswalkers. It can take loyalty counters or any type of counter off creatures. And this thing will get bigger for it. So with the environment we're going into, obviously, with all the new Planeswalkers, this is a card that is heating up. Rasputin Dreamweaver, another gold legends card on the reserve list, and this is another one that's actually pretty good in Commander. It goes up $1.59 to $127.96. Yidris Maelstrom Wielder, this goes up $1.62 to $8.50. This does not interact directly with Bolasa Citadel, I do want to make that clear, but that card is pushing this type of deck, and this is getting more popular because of it. Also worth noting, this card is only available in foil. Garrick Apex Predator goes up $1.65 to $17.09. If you're wondering why, again, it's because of Planeswalkers and War of the Spark. This is a great way to get rid of your opponent's Planeswalkers and Commander. Bladesteel Colossus goes up $1.67 to $72.23. Great vintage and Commander card. It has been pushed recently because of things like Karn the Great Creator and Ilharg the Razebore. Exquisite Blood goes up $1.80 to $24.09. Another classic Commander card. We've seen these show up in the Xantia builds, the Tasa builds, but Bolas's Citadel is pushing it now. Tainted Pact, up $1.88 to nine twenty two. Kind of an unusual card here, but it is moving because of Jace Wielder Mysteries. Monastery Mentor goes up $1.88 to twenty one ninety three. This card has been known to see Modern Legacy and Vintage play, but recently Commander has pushed it because of Feather the Redeemed. Thrasios, Triton Hero, another card that can only be found in foil, goes up $1.99 to $23.74. This has been good for a while in those Merfolk Kamina decks that use Simic Ascendancy, but it's also good in the Idris decks I mentioned earlier. Ugin the Spirit Dragon, up $1.99 to $74.55. Okay, yet again, you can probably guess why this is going up. Is it all Commander? No, but it's partially Commander, again, with those colorless decks being pushed by Karn. But yes, outside of Commander, other decks that use this card are being pushed by Karn 2, and modern Tron decks are getting the push, Legacy Eldrazi decks, among others. Doubling Season from Ravnica goes up 214 to 5994, of course, with all the proliferate going on and all of the planeswalkers, so on and so forth. This is a very popular card again. Sliver Hive, I mentioned earlier, slivers are popular. This one goes up as well, 201 to 1304. Colonian Hydra from Commander Anthology Volume 2 goes up $249 to $999. This card is getting hot because of those Simic Ascendancy proliferate decks that are out there in Commander. Worm Coil Engine, you know why this is going up. But yet again, Karn is pushing this in multiple places. Commander 2014 goes up $1.12 to $27.27. Scars of Mirrodin goes up $252 to $30.50. So aside from Commander, you're going to find this in things like Modern Tron, Legacy Eldrazi, Vintage Shops. Again, Karn the Great Creator having a huge impact. War to Bones goes up 269 to 1194. Another card and commander that people like to play with Karn because it helps just lock out your opponents. It's also an even tie card. I won't say it again, but that plays into it too. Sword of Fire and Ice from Darksteel goes up 353 to 5781. Now, we know this is a great legacy card in places like Death and Taxes and Maverick, among others. But this has gotten hotter in Commander again recently because of decks running God Eternal Oketra and Gideon Blackblade. Hazan Tamar, another one of these Gold Legends cards on the reserve list that goes up 353 to 173.99. Celestial Kirin returns to the market watch this week, going up 444 to 1271. If you want to play a Spirit deck in Commander, this now combos well with the new Ugin's Conjurant. Vampiric Tutor from Ultimate Masters, hot again, goes up 489 to 6864. Great commander card, great vintage card. Sliver Queen, another one of these Sliver Lords, but this one is on the reserve list. It goes up 527 this week to 113.83. Teferi Temporal Archmage goes up 549 to 3114. This is actually in a lot of good decks right now in Commander. Players use this in conjunction with Persistent Petitioners and or Jace Wielder of Mysteries. Also, a lot of people are using Narset Parter of Veils now, which is pushing them more into blue. Because of all of those reasons, this card is getting hot again. 
Speaking of cards getting hot again, this is the original book giveaway version of Mana Crypt. It goes up $32.82 to $339.99. Great commander card. Again, great vintage card too. Okay, let's move on to our pauper spotlight. A few cards to look at here. The first card is Ash Barons, and this is the one from Commander Anthology Volume 2. It goes up $0.10 cents to 285 Anytime this card goes up, it's worth noting that it's on the move again because it is such a big pauper staple. Preordain. Now, obviously, this isn't just a pauper card. You'll find this in Legacy and Vintage decks, too. But the Commander 2015 copy goes up $0.12 cents to 467 Magic 2011 going up $0.16 cents to $3.99. You're going to find this in the Blue Black Delver deck, which is very, very popular right now in Pauper. Here's another card that's in Blue Black Delver sideboards, as well as a lot of other decks in the format. You can find this in modern decks too. Relic of Progenitus, Modern Masters goes up 15 cents to 473. Shards of Alara goes up 17 cents to 457. It is now time for the Premium Spotlight. And you know, you listen to these videos, I have a love-hate relationship with the Premium Spotlight because I don't like to talk too much about cards that are hard to find. Promo cards, foil cards, sometimes you can't find a lot of price points online, which means they can be easily manipulated, they can be misleading, but I try to pick one card that I think is worth noting every week. This week it's Common Deer from Cold Snap. This is the foil copy going up $27.64 to $70.99. So last week, as I was making the video, this card spiked. This week, it has stabilized a little bit, so you didn't see the regular copy on the market watch. But the foil is still pretty hot. There actually have been a few decks using this card recently. The one that really set it off last week, though, was a modern Demir deck running Narset, Part of the Vales, Days Undoing. It was just a very unique brew, and because there's not a lot of copies at any given time of this probably on the marketplace, it was just not a very popular card prior to that. It just disappeared really quick. Since then, people have again put their copies out there for sale and trade, and things are stabilizing. Another place you might find this is the Legacy Mono Blue Tempo deck, but usually it's just like one in the side as opposed to two in the main that you'd find in the modern Demir deck I mentioned. All right, with that being said, that is the Market Watch for this week. Until next time, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe, and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon and have a great day.